Hi there, I'm Sandy Olnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and I'm going to make peekaboo shaker cards today with puppies. Yes, peekaboo and shaker cards, double interactive cards. And I'm going to use the Gerda Steiner Christmas Puppy Stamp Set. I love that these puppies are customizable to pretty much any puppy that you have. So I'm going to make them look like mine because that's what I do. You could also make them look like the puppy of your recipient. Or you could send a Christmas card to a puppy. Because, you know, puppies like to get mail too, don't they? <laughs> so I have stamped these guys onto some Arches cold press watercolor paper. And I'm coloring them with my Caran d'Ache pencils. These are watercolor pencils and they are expensive. I'll just tell you that right now. But one of the reasons I like to bring them up at Christmas time is because they make a great stocking stuffer for you to put on your Christmas list. The pencils are like four bucks-ish each, about that. And you can get them individually. So what I would do would be to pick out a few colors that you think you would use a lot, especially ones that are going to be in a lot of the types of images that you do. If you do a lot of bright colored things, get your bright colors. If you do animals, get some browns and, and blacks and grays and things. So pick them, some things that you'll use a lot. You can use them in conjunction with your other watercolor pencils. They're not going to harm each other to be used on the same piece. And they're fun to play with. And once you start using them, I think you'll see the difference between these and others. But it's expensive. And I'll just tell you that if you're a full set syndrome gal like me, then you'll just have to bite the bullet because you're going to want them all once you start getting them. But there you go. For these images, I'm going to use them inside little windows. So I really don't need all this background that I'm coloring, but since I'm doing this on a video, I thought I'd show you the full coloring of the whole thing and give you an idea of how these pencils melt out with water when I start applying that with the brush. But if you're doing this card, these cards at home, then you could color just the portion of the image that you need. You could actually draw the little shape of the window and stamp your image into it and know how much to color. So you don't have to do as much as I'm doing. I'm using my number eight silver brush, uh, my silver round brush, one of my favorite things. Another great idea for stocking stuffer because, you know, who wouldn't want the perfect brush for card makers? The number 12 is the other one that I use a lot, but a lot of you guys only do small stampy things and it would be probably more helpful to have the eight if you're only going to get one. So I'm kind of moving around the image doing my yellows first because for one, it means I don't have to clean my brush as much. And for two, it helps me to move around all the different images because if I started coloring many things on the same image, they're going to end up touching each other and bleeding. And here I'm even being dangerous going from yellow to the red and just praying that that doesn't start turning into a little red behind on him. And then I'm going to move to my re my reds and then move around to my greens and stuff just to keep myself moving around different portions of these images. Because I am one of those people who's just not patient. Really need to learn some patience when I watercolor. And it helps me to have several images to color at once. And that is just one of those things that I often do was for the most part I like to color all the images anyway so I'll make four cards if there's four images unless I can fit them all into one scene like I do sometimes and uh, that sort of thing you can see how well this these pencils water out and they turn into watercolor real easily you may have had some experience with some watercolor pencils where you end up with little dots of color that they don't just kind of mush out into this nice wash and that's because the surface of the paper has texture in it. So there's peaks and valleys. If you picture little mountaintops and then valleys between them. And the pencil gets stuck on those mountaintops. So sometimes you have to scrub a little harder with your brush or a little longer or wait for it to, to get wet enough that you can move it around. Because that's the idea. You need to move that pigment so that it slides down into those valleys as well. And with these pencils, it just doesn't really take much work to get that to happen. And that's one of those things in life is that when we use things that cost more money, like if you get a bra that costs you more money, it's gonna fit better. It's the shoulder slap straps are not gonna slide down on you. That's probably a bad example. Is that inappropriate for YouTube? Uh, okay, let's try socks. Your socks won't slide down if you get more expensive socks. 
that's just the nature of life. So if you get things that cost more money, you're generally going to get some better results from them. So ask for a few for Christmas from Santa Claus, from your kids. You know, at four bucks, it can be a really nice stocking stuffer that somebody can feel like they gave you something you really wanted. And you can build up a collection very slowly that way for Christmas presents, Mother's Day presents, birthday presents, little by little. So if you're into watercolor pencils, that's a great idea. And now on to the construction of the card, which entails these mini window dies from Ellen Hudson. And they cut the rest of the window and leave a score line so the window opens. And I die cut them at the same time as I did the border die, which is an MFT stitched rectangle die. I'm using this thing a lot lately. It was probably one of the best things that's in my craft stash right now. They come in all different sizes in these sets. There's two of them and yeah, I use them a lot. Anyway, I pulled my tape off sideways so I don't pull up and rip the paper at all. And here all I have to do is pop the three sides and, and fold along that score line and then it's a window. So I'll show you on the round one how I lined up my image so it ends up in the inside in, a, in the right spot for my shaker. And I've already got some Be Creative tape on the back of this. You can use whatever adhesive you're going to use. And I'm going to line it up inside my prepared die cut piece. And then I'm going to put that onto the card base. But since there's only adhesive on the back of that image, the image will stick and then I can still use the, the rest of it to build up my, my piece for the shaker. So that is going to entail putting a piece of acetate on the directly on the back side so that the little shaker bits stay behind it. I'm just going to tape it down with some regular old scotch tape. And that's going to create my glassy window on the top. And then I need to build up the shaker part so that there's room for the little shaker things that I put inside. I'm going to use my scotch adhesive. This stuff now comes in the three quarter inch roll and you can cut it in half because it's now three quarter inch instead of the half inch so it's a little easier to do that and you can get actually twice the amount out of it so even though the roll is more expensive than the old half inch roll which they don't make anymore uh it's still i think a better deal at this point it just takes a little more work to cut it in half so that you get lots and lots of use out of it so i'm going to spin it around the circle because with these shakers you don't want all your shaker bits hiding underneath the cardstock, and I'm just tearing it as I go around. And that's going to leave no gaps in between. And if you're careful, you can peel that backing off all in one piece like you can do when you slice an apple and, and you can peel off all of the peel in one fell swoop. You could do that as well with this. I'm also building up the rest of the card so that it's lifted up equally across the surface of the card base. And now all I have to do is pull off all of the backing pieces and get it ready to put on the card as the shaker thing. So these mostly came off intact. That one little piece there came off in one chunk. But I will set that aside for the moment while I get my little bits ready for the shaker portion. And I'm going to set them down onto the image because you can't put them inside the shaker thing that we just built because you can't turn that upside down without shaker things falling all over the place. So I'm placing my honeybee diamonds. These are cute little, little teeny tiny diamond thingies. Little, I don't know what you'd call them. They're sort of gems. And I'm going to put some in there. Take out a few because that, that was a little too much for this tiny shaker. And then I can take that whole panel, turn it upside down, as long as all of my little pieces are on the inside of where that window is going to land, and then press it down. Make sure nothing gets captured underneath of any of that adhesive. And then all I have to do is shake it down, uh, sort of loosen up those little bits that are in there. And you've got a sweet little clean and simple shaker card with windows, with a peekaboo window. So here's each of the rest of them in their finished form. I use different windows based on the size of the image itself. So there's a little teeny square one with the little puppy peeking out. Very adorable. All these need is a piece of paper glued to the inside so I can write a message on them with a pen. And there you go. Aren't they cute? Hope you enjoyed this video. Please hit that like button if you did. Share it with your friends. And I will see you in the next video. Hopefully you will be 
off there in your craft room making something beautiful as well because it's that season. And I will see you in the next video. If I don't see you in that one, then you have a merry, merry Christmas. Bye-bye.